This is basically a Force Gaming video review, and I'm just going over what he's going over because some people are more informed than I am and, you know, have better way of saying things, but, you know, let's get, let's get right into it and see what this guy got to say. Earlier this month, we saw the official Korean release of Throne and Liberty. Now, I've been keeping a close eye on this as this is, I think, one of the few good-looking MMOs planned to launch globally in 20 Yeah, it did Perhaps look good. I'm not going to lie. Game is live and playable in Korea. I wanted to know what people thought. Uh, while we do expect there to be some difference between the Korean and global version, I think I really want to play this game. This is like my next like Elder Scrolls because I was on Elder Scrolls for a long time. I was on that shit for at least a solid couple years. And, you know, I can't wait. We got a new MMO coming in the game. Fact is, much of the core game will almost it looks pretty good. Same. So and I can't wait said, to play Grand Blue it, Fantasy it, too. So check me out when I stream that on my well, Twitch or Kick. Good news is that it looks like the game itself is actually quite good. After implementing changes based on beta feedback, most of the major gameplay and systems complaints have been addressed to the point where people seem to really enjoy playing Throne and Liberty. Pretty much all of the reviews that I have watched and read have been mostly positive about the game, with a few noteworthy exceptions and complaints about some specific elements, which we will, of course, cover. But overall, Okay, so basically he's just going to cover the the stagnant gameplay movement, which I kind of would have figured that would have been kind of challenging and stuff like that, you know, kind of make the experience a little more rougher and gritty and stuff like that, pretty hardcore, but you know, a lot of people didn't like it, so they put it on they put it back in the making to redo everything. So Yes, it seems like people like Throne in Liberty. Now, one of the major things is the combat. The once static, heavily rooted combat system that had little See. to no movement did get a total overhaul. And now looks to be much more in line. I can't wait to play this game. This game does look MMOs, really good. Allowing for the use of basic attacks and many skills while on the move, having some built in movement to certain skills like melee attacks that lunge you forward, for example, while also having some abilities that do root you in place, specifically for some of the more heavy hitting attacks or channeled spells. So now, instead of being forced to stand completely motionless to perform 99% of attacks and do any damage, Throne in Liberty's combat is much more balanced and along the lines of other popular tap target games, such as World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, or Star Wars The Old Republic. And to be clear, the issue was never that you had to stand still sometimes to attacks, because that's actually quite normal in tab target MMOs. No, it was the fact that you had to stand still constantly to do any damage whatsoever. If you or your target moved, <laughs> no attacks happened. So right. that basically devolved. That would have been chalked. Where both players would I mean... sit motionless, staring deep into each other's eyes while spamming abilities. And if you or your opponent didn't want to fight anymore, you just had to turn around and walk away. And for melee classes, that meant having to chase them until they decided to stop moving because while they were moving you were not doing any damage ever so if they just kept walking away you couldn't do anything you would just keep chasing them until they stood still if they didn't stand still oh well too bad but yes yeah imagine that in a pvp setting that would be insane to have to run back and forth and you know try to make sure someone stops to attack them that'd be that'd be kind of rough uh but usually with mmos i'm not into the pvp area i like the pve section but you know that's just me now, with these changes in place, there is much more balance to the combat. You can basic attack while running, cast many of your abilities on the move, and even gain ground with certain abilities that act as gap closers. So yeah, yeah I'll be honest, it was kind of a quick fix for that. They that turnaround that turnaround for that, just to do that, was was pretty dope because you know some games have been like, oh, you know, they changed the mechanics. We basically got to start from scratch and blah, 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 you know things like that. But you know, the turnaround time on this is was pretty damn great, if you ask me. And I can't wait till it comes out. What this year, twenty twenty four? That'd be pretty dope. Yeah, it is now much more like what you are probably familiar with if you have played basically any of the popular tag tab target MMOs over these past like 20 or so years. On top of that, though, they do have some other things like this reactive block system where certain enemy attacks will cause a purple indicator to appear with a shrinking circle. And if you time your and it looks so direction, clean, the way we're looking at it right now block. looks so clean, bro. Cam, which your I can't wait to be an animorph. Finally, 
character and as a kid i wanted to be one of the manamorph people ideal for playing with a controller which makes a lot of sense as this game will be launching on consoles as well as pc and with oh, these yeah. changes player feedback that i've seen has basically been overwhelmingly positive every single review that wait I've is it cross play so i'm not really sure feels much much better now, that'd be pretty cool unlike elder Combat, scrolls you know uh, that'd be pretty dope in black desert or terra well you're gonna be out of luck because that's not what this is but if you enjoy the combat systems of world of warcraft or final fantasy 14 or yep. arc age throne in liberty should now be much more up your alley that said i have heard that things start off pretty slow for the first like 15 or 20 levels but then pick up with time as you progress and get access to new skills mmo centric youtuber canon specifically told me that combat starts slow and feels akin to like the world of warcraft classic warrior experience where you're kind of auto attacking you get a few skills that you use on cooldown but those cooldowns are relatively long it's pretty that's fine early on but towards the end game as you unlock more it's basically skills, like any game progress, it gets a lot more similar to something like arc ages combat which he said he personally really enjoys yeah in general i've heard really positive things about the combat system which is a big deal for me now another thing to note is that throne in liberty is a classless mmo where your character abilities are determined by the weapons you use so instead of picking a mage tank or healer you select from two of the game's seven weapons there is the crossbow dagger great sword longbow staff sword and shield and wand and tome each of these come with their own skill tree that has wait let's look at that again what do you say sorry healer you mm -hmm. select from two of the game's crossbow seven weapons. there is the crossbow dagger great sword longbow staff sword and shield and wand and tome each of these great sword or sword and shield what are we doing and offer it and then from that you select what you want which is very similar to how it works in like new world or albion online it does seem that there is a lot of skill interaction customization and combo potential with you having two weapons equipped at a time and as such having two skill trees to pull from i was also happy to hear that the game will not require constant back and forth weapon swapping thank goodness uh, instead it looks like when you use a skill on your hot bar it automatically swaps weapons for you so okay so you're using the yeah that's so and daggers maybe you open up from range casting something like ensnaring arrow that's cool arrow vortex pretty seamless using your bow but then as the enemy gets closer to you you may want to use your shadow strike for your daggers but you won't need to manually swap to daggers just hitting the keybind right for that ability will then swap weapons for you this is a big relief to me as probably one of the biggest annoyances with these dual weapon games like ESO, New World, or Guild Wars 2 is like the required constant manual swapping between weapons. That's what I dislike the most about uh, dual weapon systems. Okay, so... Personally, it, it didn't bother me that much. I think with the format of Elder Scrolls was pretty cool and and unique. Um, I don't know. I really enjoyed Elder Scrolls. It was it was pretty dope. That was that was one of them games. I played it at launch and then I stopped and then I came back years later and dude, I was just mind blown. It was pretty. It, I I had a really good experience in that game, but yeah, um, yeah. Combat feels a lot better. There's more movement to it. If you like tab target games, if you like WoW, Final Fantasy XIV, if you liked Arc Gauge, you'll probably like the combat system here. And while it is a weapon-based class system, I'm also happy to hear that there's no hotbar swapping required. All of that is really awesome. And that's really one of the biggest things for me. Like the game feeling good to play is the number one priority as to whether or not- Now I'm gonna just throw this out here because I really liked Final Fantasy XIV. I got really far in that game. It's just- bro like you know i had uh my step bro play with me right but he had to like keep up with the content just to you know get to me i don't know it i preferred final fantasy 11 a little more than i did 14 but the combat of 14 was pretty damn awesome and i like that and but like when I was fighting, it didn't feel like I was really doing much or I was putting in work on like Final Fantasy Eleven. And then when I'm looking at this gameplay of Throne of Liberty, it looks like uh it looks like you're gonna be putting in some work. It feels like it's gonna be a challenge not i'm going to want to play a game long term a very close second to that in terms of importance is actually the content like what things are there to do see and experience in the game as for throwing a liberty 
What do they got and is it any good? Well, it does appear like they have managed to deliver a traditional open world theme park MMO. Much of what you expect with this sort of game is going to be here with a few noteworthy elements. The game's open world has been one of the most praised elements outside of the combat. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Seen in every review. It is massive, seamless, has no loading screens, instant teleportation, even going from character creator to playing is almost instantaneous. And while nice. you're playing the game, there are tons of players. I have seen gameplay clips that easily have 100 plus players all in a small confined area and that gameplay looks to be running fairly smoothly. The typical assortment of MMO questing will be in this open world. You'll be asked to kill X number of enemies, gather resources, interact with objects, find NPCs, or go and fetch... Yeah, I remember it had that like mobile like type of UI and everything. Just fantastic. And questing. Of this game are really, really good. What has impressed yeah, the visuals look insane. I love it. Render distance. I mean, you can see things from miles away and for me that right. it's a really immersive experience yeah i really like those like type of things this world when you can see clearly so far and even more so when there's right. tons of players running around as well and the game's traversal system really rewards exploration with the and more wide, man i can't wait that's gonna be there's so a dope lot of, uh, freedom of moving around and exploring in the Fucking environment right. now, Ooh, sort of wolf you could be a wolf hell yeah oh yeah we did well. see that open world events every single zone has these hourly okay public yeah events oh, yeah place where you'll have to as they should task for a reward like collecting wolf tails or killing goblins or whatever sometimes these will be pvp flagged as well so you'll have to fight off other players while attempting to complete your task killing players will even cause them to drop items if that quest has you f farming for items and leveling looks to involve uh mainly focusing on the main story quest as it rewards the most experience but then also in between doing the main story weaving in some of these world events exploration quest to bump up your level during any uh, main story quest bottlenecks. There's a few variety of dungeons in the game. There are open world non-instance dungeons, one of the things that I am most excited for. These yeah, that's pretty interesting. That have tons of normal and elite enemy packs as well as bosses, but they're fully open, so players can right. go as they please. There's no instancing here. And another interesting twist... Yeah, unlike Elder Scrolls, it's instancing. Will be fully PvE Unless uh, you're going through them like little baby, like, dungeons that doesn't require an instance you just walk in there and you'll see like an online player you know in one of them dungeons but he's talking about an open world uh open dungeon you know what i mean it lasts for about half an hour it's like a two hour and and then half an hour rotation from day to night during those nighttime hours the dungeons are then open pvp really really cool twist to that. yeah that's to interesting that. it's just more engaging and add some variety there there's also regular instance dungeons and nine of these in the game these it are said the weather and stuff, stuff is going to affect the bosses or some shit or the gameplay clear through groups of ads and then take my dad boss at the end yeah it's and pretty cool and some of these bosses they look pretty good they look pretty cool solo like boss tower climb yeah. as you move through these floors from one to the next fighting increasingly more challenging bosses. i can't wait to Speaking use that sword that sword looks pretty badass bosses, it appears like they've got around 50 i want a bow too in the game all located through various spots in the open world. look at that bow these over there the archer boss battles will be quite difficult and scaled up to the Ooh. number of players uh, potentially again over that's a lot of players and all Ooh. around the across the board it looks like boss fights do have some interesting mechanics from what we've seen things like you know don't stand in the fire crowd control ads or they kill the group pull bombs away from other players stacking on top of each other to prevent damage or heal line of sight mechanics you know if you've played mmos before you have a rough idea of what to expect from these boss fights but i have heard there's some interesting boss fights with interesting mechanical variety yes yeah, some yeah you know there were some um you know i like those uh those type of bosses that be a big uh, part of this game but it is also up to your discretion whether or not you engage it any of the game's pvp will be clearly marked there are yeah, I like some of them bosses that, like, you know, show up the little, you know, the red, uh, the glowy mechanic that you gotta dodge out of. And, yeah, I guess, you know, some, you know, uh, you know, I guess depending on the game, do have different variety of mechanics, you know. Uh, you know, there's some games I played where there's probably only, like, maybe four mechanics, maybe three mechanics max, and then you could just, like, master that and then just, just, just destroy that boss, but... I don't know. We'll see what happens up in here.
are timers that tell you when PvP events in the open world are going to be taking place. Like there will be certain zones that will fluctuate from being PvP flagged and then solely PvE. Oh, yeah. There's also those open world events which will sometimes be PvP flagged, but again, you will know. You can tell ahead of time exactly when this is going to happen. So if you want to avoid the PvP, you can, but if you enjoy PvP, there will be a lot of it on offer. And then also, it's worth mentioning from everything we've seen, there is a really big focus on guild play in this game. It is required for much of the higher tier content content both in pve and pvp there's a guild ranking system with guild quest and contributions that level up your guild this will do things like unlock new rewards access to new skills and open up new content you've got a guild hall that will have vendors in it as well as of course that's cool guild members running around and the guild hall also has a portal to guild raids which are essentially instanced versions of those open world boss fights and in mm. terms of the basic gameplay loop of this game well it looks like it's going to work like this you will be heavily incentivized to do a variety of activities you'll focus on the main story quest because that is the biggest bang for your buck in terms of experience for leveling up but that will be woven with doing world bosses with doing open world pvp with doing exploration quest and zone events i've been told that everything is basically worth your time in the leveling up process you won't have to choose between doing what you find most fun like maybe i really like pvp but it really slows up your leveling process. Well, apparently everything that you do, all of these various open world activities will be rewarding towards your game progression and is worth your time to do. Yeah, I think activities is a very now, key component data, which had all of uh, the auto to making a game have since been removed. more fun and more playable, playable continuous your skills, acquiring gold and materials. Everything took forever and felt overly grindy. But now with the removal of the autoplay features, they basically retuned all of the game's progression and farming speeds the time required to level your character and that's crazy that turnaround is insane amount of gold and materials acquired yeah that autoplay was like the only thing that was kind of like drawing me a little bit back from this because everything i loved about it i was like yeah it's pretty good but yeah that autoplay was a little it was a little, it's a little sketch man i mean i i don't really like autoplay like that like anytime i play like a mobile game or something like an rpg mobile game and it has autoplay uh, usually I don't end up playing it that long because it's not really fun to me. It's not really engaging to me. It's like one of them AFK games type shit. But uh, no, yeah, that, that's good news that they took it off, you know? from all sources was increased and to go along with that the resources required for things like crafting and upgrading stuff has been reduced basically across the i can't board, wait to see the badass gear i love when there's some badass gear said, in these mmos it is still an mmo it is still a korean mmo and there is absolutely that's fine. a lot of grind here this is that's going fine. to be a grind focused games but at least now it does feel much more in line with typical mmo progression and not artificially inflated like it was during the beta when they had all those auto play features and expected that everyone's character would be farming 24 7 either because of right manually playing it's crazy or because they turned on the auto play features and left their game running it is really awesome to hear that the game itself seems to be really fun to play the gameplay has been drastic it looks fun yeah and it's got a lot of interesting open world content they really do seem to be delivering a solid open world for sure yeah. MMO. however the bad news is that, as predicted, it is pretty much confirmed at this point that the game is very pay to win. So for starters, the cash shop called okay. Lottie That's fine. Star sells the following. You can purchase the premium currency, which is known as Lucent, and with that currency, you can do things like... And when I mean it's fine, I mean it's fine when it comes to the, you know, PvP, because I'm not trying to compete and stuff like that. I'll, I'll most likely stay free to play unless there's like some cool badass armor that looks like pretty sick cosmetically you know then i then i do something like that it doesn't that you know stats doesn't really uh you know do something for me so yeah i doubt i'll be purchasing a lot of stuff like that or a cool model that looks pretty sick i don't know i don't know i'm just saying purchase emotes for your character or cosmetics to look pretty or yeah, yeah. purchase items that remove the experience loss on death and it uh, turns out that if you get 20 of these deaths that have this kind of stacking debuff you eventually get reduction to things like your movement speed which is pretty awful so trying to reduce this death penalty will be pretty important but then probably the biggest uh, most glaring thing is the fact that the game's marketplace is essentially a real money auction house players who find good weapons and gear can post them on the marketplace 
price and then that those items will be purchased by other players with Lucent, which is the premium cash shop currency. So any player can spend real money to get oh. Lucent and then use that to purchase I mean, some of the most powerful items in the game for their character, which is about as direct pay for power as it gets. Now uh, with that said, you can only buy the base level versions of this gear and we'll still have to enhance it through the gears leveling system to get the most powerful version of gear in the game. And that enhancing process requires a lot of materials that can only really be gathered by actually playing. I was basically told that the pay to win is pretty similar to Lost Ark, where Lucent is the premium currency that acts more like Lost Ark's gold, while Solent, which is the gold in this game, acts more like Lost Ark's silver. And it does seem like that in-game earned currency and not the premium currency will be the biggest bottleneck for player power at the moment at least. But besides that, the fact is free-to-play players can technically farm for the premium currency by finding items that they sell in the marketplace that other people purchase with the premium currency. So even if you don't spend real money yourself to get the game's premium currency, you'll find items, you'll sell those items that people will buy with premium currency, which then gives you that premium currency. A lot of MMOs have done this before with these sort of systems where there's a premium currency that the free to play players can so right. readily acquire by selling to the people who are doing the swiping. One of those situations, again, of exchanging time for money. <laughs> that's pretty much what right. they're presenting here. Now I do yeah. want to add here as one final note when it comes to the monetization that uh, as mentioned, I watched a few different reviews and Canons in particular when he was addressing the game's uh, monetization and sort of the pay to win elements of it he did note that playing in his fully free to play guild where they're not doing any swiping they're not buying items in the marketplace by spending real cash they have still managed to survive yeah guild on no doubt server. The yeah of course the guild ranked number one and they have also several spin-offs of it's like yeah i mean you're paying to win but do you actually know how to use that you know do you actually know how to use that gear that you actually purchased that's pretty good you know compared to someone who's who's a hard grinder and you know I don't know, you know, just <laughs> pay to win is not for me. I'll tell you that much though within the top 10 and again they are not swiping they are fully a fully free to play guild so that's awesome that goes yeah to show you if you're looking to right. be competitive at least as of now it doesn't look like you will be required i'm not too to competitive maybe so shooters I wrap but up this by saying i am super happy and the most important thing to me when i was thinking about this game yeah. was them improving the combat yeah for sure was the content of the game interesting enough not not many companies would do that it seems like that is going change to the combat mechanics like combat and everything like that it's definitely something that i want to it's pretty awesome i like that now so much about the Game they care really, really that's a good, good. sign it's a massive shame about the monetization but it's also not unexpected that's a good look for the developers that they care about the game and they want to make changes and they want to make sure people play their game that's pretty awesome that that's going to be that it, this game's going to turn out pretty great i think and at this point i'm just thinking i'll get what enjoyment i can out of it until it feels like i need to spend hundreds of dollars in order to progress and hopefully that never happens hopefully just playing free to play nah enjoy doubt myself. it that's the game you plan right sure now sure you will we'll let you know how it pans out when the game right. officially launches globally now as of now that is planned for some time in 2024 we are expecting right. the first or second awesome. quarter although no confirmation as of yet has first or second quarter that's like surprised i should pretty mention, close see some slight differences between the korean and global Global versions in particular i think some of the year to how the monetization may very well happen but only slight differences maybe they rein in the pay to win a bit but we'll see we'll see like i said the most important thing is is the game fun to play does the combat feel good and is there interesting content it appears like the answer to all of that is yes even with the presence yeah. of this pay to win stuff that part of it is the most important part of it for me that the game is fun to play that it feels good to play and that there's entertaining and enjoyable content and right. this open world with all of these systems with the pvp stuff i'm definitely looking forward to giving this shot and we'll yeah. have to see how all that monetization again plays out here with the global yeah. release but that does it for me generally i am happy to hear that throne of liberty is yeah. actually a good game yeah, you know, that's, uh, yeah, that's, pre that's pretty dope, you know, um, very, I, you know, I like, I like, uh, looking at, you know, some content creators videos, you know, uh, and see what they gotta, you know, talk about and the information that they give, you know, it's pretty good and pretty good way to explain and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I can't wait for this game to come out. There's a bunch of stuff happening as you can see, you know um the developers they care and that's always a good sign unlike kind of like you know call of duty for example you know every time they come out with an update there's something broken and then they leave it broken for like eight weeks and stuff or 
months and months and you're just like bro what's going on here but man that's that's pretty awesome with the turnaround time that they did to that like i told you not many developers really go that far to you know changing you know how the game actually works that's pretty impressive i like that well yeah hope you guys enjoy that video all right and uh till next time yeah